to your YouTube, Elmer. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. Have a bit of a puzzle. Let's say you put up an antenna for HF, 10 meters maybe, and you check the SWR at the transceiver at the end of the coax run, and it's perfect, one to one, and it's broad, covers most of 10 meters. And then you go outside and you just, you, because the performance isn't quite what you think it should be, and you measure it outside with a three foot jumper or maybe a six foot jumper, and the SWR is three to one on the same frequency. Well, how is that possible? Why would it be three to one outside and one to one inside? What's the difference? Now, someone asked that question in a discussion group, and he got lots of different answers. One of the suggestions was that the coax was bad, that the coax that he was using as a jumper uh, had a short, or that he needed to ground the antenna, because, you know, uh, you need to ground all antennas. Um, that the... Um, uh, that he needed to disconnect the lightning arrestor he had had in the circuit because that was causing some difficulties. Um, the, maybe the SWR meter was defective because it used an SWR meter inside the radio room and a nano VNA at the antenna. It was just convenient to take the nano VNA out there and take a look. So what's the correct answer? Why would the SWR be higher at the antenna versus at the transceiver. What in the world is going on? And the um, manufacturer was contacted and suggestions were made to, to run a ground wire to the ballon because it had a wing nut on it and to run number 14 down to a driven stake for this, what amounted to a dipole antenna because that would improve the SWR. You know, if you you have to have an RF ground, right? So grounding the um, matching device at the antenna surely is going to help, right? Because you've got to have an RF ground. We all know that. So what is the answer here? Why would the SWR be higher at the antenna and lower at the transceiver? And I'm going to demonstrate that here. I'm going to connect an antenna that's going to show a really good SWR and then a really lousy SWR. And then I might even do a different antenna and sweep um, that antenna across many of the handbands. You know, if I use enough coax, my Yagi antenna might work on 15, might work on 10, might even work on 40. Who knows? But let's find out. What happens when we change the length of the coax? And does it have anything to do with standing waves? Let's go find out. Let's go hook up stuff and see what happens. I'll be right back after I connect all this stuff and get a camera going. Stand by. This is what the uh, SWR curve looks like using a dummy load from 14 megahertz to 14.5. So let's sweep the antenna and see what that looks like. Now, when I'm sweeping it, I've got the 100 feet of coax in the line. And here comes the SWR curve at 20 meters. Pretty much resonant about 14.2. Um, SWR curve goes from about 2 to 1 um, to about 2.2. Uh, three or four to one. Okay, let's sweep the antenna again. This is set as a reference. Um, this is with 100 feet of coax in the line. I'm going to change that out and have just a three foot jumper. So again, I'm sweeping roughly from 14 megahertz to 14.5 uh, and let's see what happens. And the SWR curve is higher at 14 megahertz now the uh, SWR is about 3 to 1. Same thing at 14.35 or so. It's also about 3 to 1. So the white curve is with 100 feet of coax. And the red curve is with 3 feet of coax. So the SWR is higher 
with the three feet of coax because of feed line losses. Okay, let's do a second or third, actually a third sweep of the antenna. We're going to go from 14 megahertz from um, 20 meters up to 10 and see what that looks like when the SWR comes down. And sure enough, but not by much. So the uh, lowest SWR looks like it's about almost 3 to 1 at some spot. So I'll make that the reference. Now let's sweep it again and this time we'll do it with 100 feet of coax and see what that looks like. Well, it will improve the uh, the SWR. And so here we go. We're going to sweep this antenna and see what it looks like. And the red sweep is the 100 feet of coax and look at that. It's actually pretty good in spots. See, my antenna will work at uh, uh, 15 meters and looks like it'll work again at 10 meters. And um, it's terrific. Just look at that SWR curve. That's great. No, it's not. Okay, so what did we find out? We found out that there was loss in the coax and that made the SWR curve look better than it really was because part of the reflected power from the antenna was being changed to heat in the coax. It was changed to loss. So where you might have, uh, let's say, a couple of watts reflected, by the time it got back to the SWR bridge, that couple of watts may be decreased to a quarter of a watt or half a watt. Probably more like um, if it was three watts here, it might be two watts here. And also because the SWR is high, those SWR losses now increase. So it compounds the loss that you see in the coax. So it's just one of those things that you really want to check the SWR of an antenna pretty much at the feed point with some exceptions. And also that the kind of coax that you use, and I intentionally used RG8X because it can be really lossy, especially at 30 megahertz or 10 meters. So the kind of coax is important. The SWR needs to be low. And antennas that claim to cover all kinds of handbands, be suspicious of that. Because while the SWR might be low, it may in fact not be much of an antenna. Be very cautious of manufacturer's claims that it covers all handbands. You don't want an antenna that does everything because it just simply won't do it. Pick a couple of bands, put an antenna up that covers a couple of bands, and be happy with that for now. If you want to cover another band, let's say you put up an antenna for 2015 and 10 meters is coming to life, well then put up a 10 meter dipole. But don't put up an antenna that you think is going to cover 80, 40, 20, all the way down to 10, all the way up to 10 meters, because the performance of that antenna is going to be very, very limited. And you will regret that, that, that performance. There are honest manufacturers. I hope to interview one. I'm trying to set that up now. I watched one of his interviews. He's blunt about what works and what doesn't. Uh, so I think it'll be a fun interview. So stay tuned for that one. Hopefully I can snag that interview. I'm Jim, W6LG in Rockland, California. And my SWRs tend to be low. <laughs> 73. Bye -bye. Oh, if you haven't subscribed, please do that. If you would like to uh, make a donation, it's one side or the other. I'll put up a flag.